All right, I've got this new recipe to try. I'm starting to totally understand where my mom was coming from my whole life. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out consistently good dinners. I don't feel like, I feel like I do the exact same thing over and over again. It gets so boring and I don't know. I'm always caught in this, uh, in this routine of like wanting to make everything from scratch and then going back to being like, I don't have time for that <laughs> um, or the skill for that. And so still kind of experimenting with new things, but I wanted to mix it up tonight because I feel like I've been making, again, the exact same things constantly. So I saw this recipe and it looks so good and so easy. I'm just hoping it turns out right. Uh, it is, So as I was saying, and we had this discussion while we were talking, was that we hate making dinner. Everything feels so routine and mundane. And especially for me, like, I've been trying so hard to, uh, you know, kind of go back to what I always knew, which was making everything homemade and from scratch. And, and I tried to go like ultra from scratch, like making bread, making butter, uh, my spices, tortillas, like all this kind of stuff. And I think that has probably been the hardest part um, of like my adult years is, you know, as, as kind of like cliche as it sounds, is like not really knowing who I am. Because for years, that was who I was. It was the person that did everything frugally, everything homemade. I was very talented in my cooking and my baking and, and like creativity and all this stuff. And I feel like I've lost that. And I wanted so badly to get back to that, but again, I just don't have the time. After the shifts that I work, you know, like last night, I didn't clock out till eight o'clock. A lot of times I don't get off till seven. I work from five in the morning till seven. Um, and then there's not time to make something from scratch unless I want to eat uh, at like nine o'clock at night. And so then I have to like make this very particular plan of when I can cook and prep things and what will stay fresh and be able to be reheated. and. Um, you know, do all of that on my days off, but then I don't really even get a day off. And if I forget to do it, then I'm screwed. And so then we end up eating fast food way more than if I just buy things pre-cooked. Uh, and so like even tonight, I, you know, I went back to just buying the store-bought bread, um, pre-made dough from Winco, stuff like that. And it like, it feels a little sad. Even as I'm standing here cooking, I'm like, I, I feel like it's taking shortcuts. Um, but it gives a better result and I have more time. I have more time to focus on Steve versus being like, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to listen to this. I need to cook. I need to prep this. I need to, you know, do all these different things. Um, so it's, it's going to be a part of finding my new, I guess, my new identity and my new joy in serving that way. Um, and not feeling like it's second rate. Um, but so what we're making and what I just did. I saw a recipe, it looks super easy and fast, uh, is taco cinnamon rolls, so taco rolls. Uh, so we're gonna do, like I said, I got the pre-made dough from Winco um, and I just browned up some ground beef. I'm gonna drain that because it's a higher fat content. Um, and then apparently all we do is layer on salsa, ground beef, cheese, roll them up, stick them in the oven. So hopefully that'll work. And then I've got, I think you can top it with pretty much anything you want. Um, I've got some queso, I've got some sour cream, I've got some lettuce, uh, Steve loves hot sauce and jalapenos. Uh, so anything you would put on a normal taco, you could, I'm guessing we can put right over the top. So we're gonna see how this goes. So let me, we're gonna drain out this meat. Sorry, my TV's going. I've been watching, uh, my two big things lately have been Mike and Molly and King of Queens. I love those shows. Okay, so, oh, for, normally when I would be making bread, I would put uh, flour down to put this, to roll this dough out. But I think what we're gonna do tonight, because I don't really want this to get too tough, uh, so I'm just gonna spray the countertop. Um, and that was another thing, like a, another kind of adjustment for me is like, uh, you know, I, I had thought on the way home today, I was like, oh, well, I'll 
actually make this dough from scratch. The, the dough that I've been using um, for my bread is amazing and it rises. That's a big thing for me. It rises so well because there's been so many other times that uh, I have used dough or if I tried to make, you know, cinnamon rolls or something like that and the stupid dough just will not rise. Um, and so I loved that part and, and again, I was like, oh, then I can still, you know, kind of have it homemade. And I ran out of time and I knew, I'm like, you know, I need to, I need to take my shortcuts because uh, I really haven't been feeling well lately. And yeah, it kind of worried me a little bit. I'm stupid, you know, got just, just some parts stuff acting up. It's not a big deal. But um, I, you know, so again, this it was kind of a hard adjustment like to, to go out and buy this dough because again, I just, I want things homemade. That's, that's who I always was. And I feel like it always tastes better and, and stuff like that. Uh, but that's just not my reality anymore. So, um, I'm hoping, I think where I was going with that, I got totally sidetracked, where I was going with that was, this dough, when I've used it before, it's a little bit, like, as weird to say it, almost like too bready. It's almost the consistency of like, the breadsticks from um, Olive Garden. Um, and sometimes I want it a little bit lighter, like like when making a, a pizza dough or something. Uh, you know, like when you get pizza from the from the store or from the shop, you know, whatever you want to call it, restaurant. Um, it's always got like those those little air bubbles in it, uh, and that's what I want. This is a little bit more dense, which is great for like handling it. Um, so I'm just hoping it turns out pretty well. Uh, and that's what I loved also about my bread recipe before was that, um, it, uh, it was like dense enough almost to, to where it just like, it had a great texture when you bit into it. Um, but you couldn't handle it. If you, if you tried to eat a sandwich or just pick up the piece with one hand, it would immediately fall and crumble apart. And that's why Steve and I decided um, to just go back to using the store-bought bread because I know that if I was to tweak it for a while, it would be fine uh, and I'd find that perfect consistency. But again, I don't have the time and I don't know if it's just because I'm tired but or if I just lack the devotion, but to me that it's just, I see that as like, it kills me. I feel like I'm wasting money to constantly try and retry recipes that don't turn out well. Um, okay, so I'm not sure exactly how much of this is too much. Uh, so this is just our salsa. Um, you can use any kind you want. I think, what have we got? We've got mild, because I cannot handle my spice. Steve can. He loves anything spicy, and I die. <laughs> I, uh, I cannot even handle buffalo sauce which everybody I've told that to is shocked because I think that's like the standard for just kind of something having a little kick to it. I cannot. It's way too much for me. Um, I start choking, I need a glass of water, and I've downed that whole glass by the time I get like three bites in, four bites in. So uh, that is just not in my realm of possibilities. Um, so I definitely, like on this, I definitely am gonna save adding uh, things like jalapenos or hot sauce or anything until after. I'm gonna let Steve handle that and just put it on the pieces that he's eating because I will not be able to tolerate it. So let's see, I'm hoping this works. Um, I'm trying, like I'm trying to spread everything out to the edges just on these three sides because I'm gonna roll it this way. Uh, and as I'm rolling, I don't want everything to get pushed off the end. So. And this meat didn't really taste too, or didn't smell rather, uh, very taco-y. So I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning to it. Um, the seasoning I did make from scratch and it was super, super easy and definitely a lot cheaper than buying it. 
Um, so I'll probably continue to do that because it's so simple. And again, my mom and I were talking about this. Um, I love Miss Brenda Gant. She is the, sorry, my battery was low. I'm having so many issues with this phone. This video is already cut off like four times as I've been trying to do this. Um, I love Brenda Gant. She's a, she's a little lady from the South, a little old lady. Uh, she runs a bed and breakfast and she has these great home recipes. Uh, and you know, everything is just very simple because that's her big thing, just keeping life simple. Um, you know, she doesn't like anything complicated, fancy. It's like, it's just, just good old family recipes and interactions and things like that. So we got both of her books uh, and I've yet to try anything out of her books other than her biscuits, which are so good, so good. I have tried, wanted for years to, um, to be able to make true homemade biscuits and now like this recipe is a no fail every time. I think the only issue I had with it was uh, the timing because um, we tried it in my mom's oven and they turned out perfect. I did the exact same temperature and amount of time here, uh, which our elevation is, I think we're at least like a thousand feet higher. Um, and they were raw mostly in the middle. So I just have to add like another, I think it's five, 10 minutes, something like that. Um, okay, these are gonna be very full. <laughs> I think I'm already gonna be rolling off the side. We're gonna see. Oh. See, and this is kind of why too, I stopped making homemade cinnamon rolls um, because every time I did this, it was just such a mess and they never turned out even and it was super frustrating. And so, ooh, but hey, it's kind of working except for that side, it's all coming apart now. And I've pinched it together. I don't know if it's because of the oil that I used. I think it probably is, but it is not sealing. So, oof, okay, yeah, we definitely have a huge mess, but Let's see if this works. Um, tastes good. Go bar. Um, so what I'm gonna do because I don't even know what time it is. Uh, 6.30, so Steve doesn't get off work for another 30 to 30 minutes, 45 minutes, because um, he's gonna give report at seven, and that can sometimes take a while. Um, so what I'm gonna do is these, I think it said they only take like 10 minutes. So I'm going to let them rise. I've had the oven preheating for a while, because um, I preheated it and then got on the phone with my mom. So I'm gonna let them sit right next to the oven and hopefully rise a lot uh, before I put them in. And then I'll probably stick them in. I'm gonna cut off these edges here so they're nice and even. And I wanna make these nice and thick. Uh, so I'm probably gonna put them in the oven. Oh my goodness, these are so Probably, I don't even know how it's gonna work. Okay, hold on. Let's see, now I'm quiet because I'm thinking. Um, let's see, I'm gonna use this spatula, see if I can kind of hold these together a little bit better. Because normally, all the innards of a cinnamon roll, ah! See, there we go, kind of worked. You can see that. But it's, yeah, very, very crumbly. Normally all the innards of a cinnamon roll stick together much better than this, so they're not a bunch of loose little pieces. All right. See, in this, I think it's mostly, like Steve is always really happy with my cooking, usually. There's every once in a while, there's a recipe where he's like, so bad. Uh, was it supposed to be like that? <laughs> um, you know, but he still, he won't be honest with me usually for a while. Like even the other night when I asked him, hey, do you want me to keep, okay, I'm struggling now. Do you want me to keep making bread from scratch? Because he said he loved the taste. Um, but we both, again, have just struggled with the consistency of it. And 
It took me prodding him probably three, four different times for him to finally say, let's go back to store-bought bread. <laughs> uh, Cause he just didn't want to hurt my feelings. He knows, ah, he knows I work really hard and put a lot of devotion towards this. Um, so it's, it's super, super sweet. Uh, I don't remember where I was going with that. Gosh, darn it. I've been doing that, I feel like constantly. And I'm not even super tired right now. Again, I've been really worn out. Um, and I was really tired this morning, but not now. Like I've, I feel more awake since I was talking to my mom. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna, you know, keep trying recipes like this. That's where I was going is even though like it, again, to me, it kind of feels second rate because it's it's like half homemade and stuff coming out of the jar like even even salsa gosh my mom we never ever bought pre-made salsa she made it from scratch it was the best recipe and the woman doesn't know where the recipe is or she actually she never had one um she always just did it from memory so now i want to make that salsa and she never has the ingredients um, she goes, I'll have to, I would have to walk through it with you. I'm like, great. Thanks mom. Um, but you know, things like salsa, spaghetti sauce, um, so many different things. We never, never, ever touched a package of those things. Okay. I'm just going to take these little bits and kind of throw them in the centers here to act as like a filling so that when they blow up, they all kind of meld together. Um, and so it's really hard for me to do stuff like this where it's like pre-bought dough, pre-bought salsa. Um, you know, it just, again, it feels second rate. So, but if Steve is happy with it, if in the end it tastes good, we're not hungry, um, you know, we've got what we need. So I, I so admire the ladies out there that have that ability to see every realm of their providing. Um, as beautiful and and as serving you know in a loving way versus always comparing it because that's what I do um, so I definitely want to try and get back to that I'm just not sure how it's you know I've, I've always had a very easy time I'm gonna keep you over here while I'm still talking um, I've always had a very easy time accepting certain things like with my whole physical journey, uh, medical journey issues, you know, there, no problem. I, I saw that as something very beautiful and something that I could use for in so many different ways for so many other people. Um, by the way, I just covered this tray with a towel and it's sitting right next to a 350 degree oven. Um, so I'm gonna let it sit there until seven. So about 30 minutes um, and we'll see if these rise. Uh, but anyway, so I always found that so easy, yet I'm so bad at accepting so many other things, like any sort of emotional suffering, any sort of, you know, uh, acceptance of not being able to do exactly what I want to, exactly the way that I want to, um, something like this. I'm like, well, it should be this way and I should be able to do it this way and I should be this kind of woman. But there's nothing, I know that there's nothing wrong with the way I'm doing it. That, you know, adjustments here and there are fine. Um, shortcuts here and there are totally fine. And that my life is different than so many other people. Uh, but I can't actually accept that and feel it yet. It, it still just feels a little disheartening. So somewhere on this journey, I'm going to get there. I hope. Um, you know, and... And I think that's just, you know, maybe something I should, I should take up with God as, as corny as that sounds. Um, I never really know what to talk to him about anymore. Um, other than other people, I, you know, I have lots of people that I, I pray for that I love so much and I want the best for them. And, you know, we talk about them, but with myself, I never really know what to say. So having talked this out and rattled your ears off, I think it may be a good conversation for the two of us. Um, so again, I will show you what these look like when they come out. It's covered 350 degree oven. I believe the direction said like 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes. I'll have all of the, all the, uh, ingredients and the, um, instructions and all of that below in the description.
These turned out gorgeous. I'm honestly pretty shocked. Uh, it looks like, I mean, from what I can feel, from what I can see, they are done all the way through. Yeah, they just, they smell great. They look beautiful. I'm shocked. I think I'm kind of proud. Um, I'm probably just gonna leave them the way they are. I was thinking, I'm like, I might put more cheese on top and then maybe a little more taco seasoning. Um, actually, while they're hot, I think I am gonna sprinkle them with just a little more taco seasoning. But I'm gonna leave the cheese off because I've got some queso. Like I said, I've got some, um, some sour cream, some salsa, all these different things to put on the top. So I don't wanna add too much. So we will just leave them like so. There you go. And we'll see what Steve thinks. He should be uh, here from work any time. So I'm going to leave, I think I'll leave these out, but I am going to cover them in tin foil so they stay nice and warm. And we'll see what he thinks. What's the verdict on the taco rolls? The taco, like the Mexican cinnamon rolls? Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, I thought they were going to be a little bit more doughy than they were, but they, uh, they turned out pretty damn good. They did. Uh, the middle ones, I think, got a little bit more soft. Either yeah. that or just the cheese is settling cheese but yeah because you're particular about your dough yeah we had good toppings though uh like queso and spanish stuff <laughs> no 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 his finick is that what you yeah. call it? His finick. His finick. okay cool